some cards charge a fee so you can plan ahead get a prepaid card for instance you know where there's no extra fees and that way you know how much you're paying when you spend abroad what sort of planning do you do for your own holidays when you go away how much time do you spend on looking for extra costs um, well, <laughs> I spend a lot of time because, uh, you know, I have a family of four. I'm very money conscious. And, you know, when, when I plan, I know that maybe the flights could be, you know, a £1,000, a hotel could be a £1,000. I know to budget for, you know, £100 a day or so is what I do for my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I, and I do check the terms and conditions to make sure there aren't any extra costs. You know, so, for instance, if we're going to fly on a budget airline, I decide to pay in advance for the extra baggage if I want to carry an, uh, an extra big case. So you make sure you read the terms and conditions and know exactly what you're paying for when you're booking. Exactly. I take the time to ensure that I don't want to come home from one day and have a huge credit card bill. That means I'm still paying for my break months later. I think many people do pay for the holidays that way. I know I've been guilty of that myself in the past. <laughs> Uh, you're a consumer expert and you give advice. How can we find out more about the advice and tips that you give? Well, uh, on the on the Atoll website, there's uh, some uh, advice that I've given about preparing for your holidays. You know, there are other websites where people can, can find out the kind of things they need to think about uh, when planning on the holidays. It's a question of making the most of what's available on the internet for free. Hello, it's Roy. Yeah, we're on the ferry. We should be in Spain tomorrow afternoon. Well, be careful. Lots of crooks on the roads out here. Crooks? <laughs> You know where I grew up. This is different. They target British registered vehicles. Yeah, they used to do that around my way. I'm serious. They'll tell you there's something wrong with your car, so you pull over, then they rob you. Or they distract you at a motorway stop. They target hire cars, too. Hire cars? Yeah, well, they're driven by tourists. Oh, OK, I'll watch out. Good. So, looking forward to the drive down? Yeah. <laughs> Thieves in Spain have been targeting hire cars and UK registered vehicles, so be extra careful on the roads. For details, visit gov.uk and search for Living in Spain. You're listening to The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. Travel Lodger said sorry to her father after police questioning. The hotel chain apologised to the father after staff called police when he checked into a hotel with his 13-year-old daughter. Dad Craig Darwell and his daughter were questioned by officers due to the misplaced fears about the girl's safety. Mr Darwell had booked the, a double room at the Chertsey Travel Lodge online because there were no other rooms available for him and his daughter, whom he was taken to nearby Fort Park for a, rest, uh, for a treat. When staff questioned him at check-in, he wasn't able to provide any ID to prove the girl was his daughter. Only his Facebook profile were po- photos of her as a baby and on her 13th birthday. Staff then called Surrey Police, who questioned the girl, which, said Mr Darwell, was distressing for her. He has now called on hotels to request ID for children during the online booking process. A spokesperson for the hotel train said, We take our responsibilities towards protecting children and vulnerable young people extremely seriously. Our colleagues are trained based on current national guidelines from the NSPCC, the police and other agencies, and in the past, hotel team actions have led to successful intervention to protect young people. Clearly fine judgment has to be made and we deeply regret any distress or inconvenience caused to Mr Darwell on this occasion. We are undertaking a full investigation into the circumstances and will take careful note of any lessons learned in due course, including additional training where appropriate. In the meantime we would like to apologise to Mr Darwell for the situation he encountered and we will be taking, making further contact with him as our investigation continues. Something similar happened to me once. I took my niece with my wife to the cinema. My wife, it was to a children's film. My wife and my niece went for a pee before they went in. So I walked in on my own. And if look could kill from the parents because there's a, young, a man walking in on his own to a children's film, I would be well dead. Clearly there does need to be some concerns shared by people in this situation to make sure that no harm comes but people are jumping to conclusions and perhaps we just need this situation to die down a little bit more but what about you have you have been in a similar situation have you been glared at have you found problems have you been investigated by the police simply for taking your daughter or niece to somewhere when on your own let me know facebook.com slash john Gwyn travel show 
And talking about overzealous checking, uh, British travel uh, holiday, sorry, British holiday makers could be asked to disclose passwords and other personal arrival uh, data when they arrive in the US. According to the Wall Street Journal, tourists from the UK and other countries may have to reveal personal data, disclose financial information, and face detailed ideological questioning. This means that travellers to the US could be denied entry unless they hand over social media passwords, phone contacts and other personal information. These measures are being considered as part of the Trump's administration's extreme vetting policy. Luckily for US citizens, they have rights against unlawful searches at the border, so measures will not apply to them. The US Customs and Border Patrol told the Guardian newspaper, all international travellers arriving in the US are subject to US Customs and Border Protection, CBT, inspection. The inspection may include electronic devices such as computers, discs, drives, tapes, mobile phones and other communication devices, cameras, music and other media players and any other electronic and digital device. Keeping America safe and enforcing our nation's laws in an increasing digital world depends on our ability to lawfully examine all materials entered into the US. A digital civil rights campaign group Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF, told The Guardian that if a foreign visitor refuses the border agency's demand to unlock his digital devices, provide a device password or provide social media information and the agent responds by destroying, uh, by denying entry, the foreign visitor may have little recourse. To me, that's another reason not to visit the States. They're just... Oh, I, this words about their entry requirements just upset me deeply. I've only been to the US once, and when we went there, it was blindingly obvious that only black people were being pulled over for inspection. It was that that obvious, and since then, it's got far worse with all these other checks. So America, though there's one or two places I want to see in America, is a long way off my list of places to go and visit for now. Anyway, what about you? Have all this faffing about? We're getting an ESTA or ESTA. And all these other bits and pieces put you off visiting the country or do you think there's no problem? Facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. This might be comments visiting the USA. Now when you come to visit the USA and you're at the airport, uh, the Transport uh, Security Administration, TSA, do have a reputation of being nasty, mean and mean and nasty. But anyway, uh, it has admitted that to an error and says that taking pot on planes is forbidden. Recent updates to the TSA's website did say that medical marijuana was an item that was allowed on carry-on or checked luggage. That error came to light after a pro-cannabis activist tweeted the apparent change in policy on the agency's What Can I Bring page, and this caused the TSA to backtrack and issue a statement. The statement says there was an error in the database of new search of a new search tool, and that's now corrected. While we have no regulations on possessing or transporting marijuana, marijuana even, possession is a crime under federal law, the statement said. Although not a priority for TSA searches, all narcotics, whether for medical purposes or otherwise, have to be reported to the law enforcement when discovered. Whether or not marijuana is considered legal under local law is not relevant to TSA screening because TSA is governed by federal law. It for, uh, it further states on the TSA website. So uh, at least they've admitted that they made a mistake. I've had no experience in the TSA because my visit to the US was way before they got their current setup. But what about you? I've already mentioned about whether or not you want to go to America, but how have you been dealt with if you've been to America by the TSA? Have you found them straightforward and just go through? Have you felt threatened at any time because of the way they're uh, talking to you? Let me know, facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. What about my phone call? I want to call my family. Too late now. Please, please, please. Step through now, please. Oh, no. Too late now. Here's the goods. You take them in false bottom bag, you strap them to your body, it's up to you. Look, I've, I've changed my mind. I want out. <laughs> Too late now. So, you're offering me a free holiday? Yeah. I just have to bring back something for a friend of yours. That's right. 
and you'll get some serious cash. Right. Well? Um... Not too late. Don't get talked into trafficking drugs. Once you're in, the British government can't get you out. Don't throw your life away. Good morning, sir. Hi, I'm checking in for my flight. Lovely. Business or pleasure? Holiday. And where will you be staying? With my parents. They live over there. Lovely. Travel insurance? Oh, no, thanks. Have you got travel insurance? Uh, no. Check to see if you need any vaccinations? No. Checked out the local laws? No, look. <laughs> Why do I need to know all this? I'm just staying with my parents. Uh-huh. Is either of your parents A, a local lawyer, or the chief of police, B, fabulously wealthy, C, the owner of a private plane with its own fully trained medical staff, or D, none of the above? Uh, D. Lovely. Are you a superhero and, in fact, immortal? Things can go wrong on holiday abroad, even if you're staying with family. So check it out before you check in. Find out more at gov.uk slash know before you go. You can follow me on Twitter at holiday underscore hut. We've reached the end of this week's show. I hope you found the information from our guests useful and maybe some of the travel news too. As I mentioned, I'm interested to know on your thoughts about visiting the USA or if you feel the security requirements to get into the country are just too over the top or whether you think there's no problem. Uh, just contact me via the Facebook page. When Jill was on at the beginning of the show, she mentioned many websites, Google Flights, Kayak, uh, Skyscanner, and a couple of apps as well called uh, MapMe and SyncC. I can't read my handwriting. It's really bad. I should have my glasses on. But anyway, there will be links to all the things that Jill mentioned at facebook.com slash Show including the correct names of the apps you mentioned. On my website, johngwin.me, I have a travel research section where it's got loads of websites you can use to plan and research a holiday. I try to update it as and when I can, but do you have any favourite websites that you use when it comes to booking a holiday? I'm assuming most of you don't go the old-fashioned way and go to a travel agent, you do it all yourself. But what are your favourites? How do you keep your holiday prices low? How do you find the ideal places to go and visit please do share your face your website tips and hidden secrets at the facebook page and also any apps that you use whether at home planning your trip or once you're away and there is a website numero uh, which i will be putting on the facebook page in case i got the name wrong but it does have the prices at most of the cities and town large towns in europe so if you are planning you want to know how much it's going to cost you for a pint of beer or a cup of coffee this website does have quite up-to-date information on prices and it gives you the option to see the prices in the local currency or in your preferred currency. So if you're in the UK, you can have it in pounds to get a good idea of how much a night out at your holiday destination is going to cost you. And I do hope you can join me next time on The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com where each week I check out before you check in. 